Hello, welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear adaptive control. I'm Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. We are again in front of our motivational image. We are already well into um, sort of learning about tools and techniques that will um, help us analyze algorithms that drive autonomous systems such as this rover on Mars. So let's see what it is that we spoke about last time. So until last time, we um, were sort of uh, beginning to look at the notions of stability in the sense of Lyapunov. I hope I was able to impress upon you that um, this contribution by A.M. Lyapunov, a Russian mathematician in 1900s, uh, sort of changed the world of nonlinear control. And honestly, there would not have been this uh, sort of serious curriculum in nonlinear systems and control if it was not for the contributions of uh, this gentleman. Yeah. Uh, so what did we do? We uh, sort of began by looking at, you know, what uh, the system in consideration looks like. And we carefully stated that, you know, this uh, system uh, will be always uh, defined using a differential equation such as this along with an initial condition at a given initial time all right so this was important to specify the system in completeness okay now we of course also spoke about uh, you know the assumption of existence of unique solutions right so we actually gave some examples where we uh, sort of uh, saw that there is a possibility that solution may not exist for a given differential equation with initial condition uh, beyond a certain point in time. Or uh, it could also be that there is non-uniqueness in solution given an initial condition. So there could be multiple solution trajectories such as this picture here, okay, for a given differential equation and a particular initial condition. Right? So we wanted to avoid uh, these sort of pitfalls, at least in the uh, discussion that we are having in this course yeah uh, so we make use of a rather nice assumption right which helps us to uh, sort of uh, evade these pitfalls if you may so the assumption is that this function f is Lipschitz continuous in the state x and it is continuous in time okay so this is the assumption that we sort of ended up with we even uh, saw that this is a sort of a sublinearity assumption okay yeah and and uh, we saw that the cases that we considered well at least i hypothesized that the cases that we considered do not fall under this lipschitz assumption and well i asked all of you to verify whether that is the case yeah and i hope at least some of you put an effort into verifying whether you know these functions are uh, satisfying the lipschitz condition or not all right Excellent. So now that we have the system set up in place, right, that is this um, sort of a differential equation with an initial condition, right, once we have this set up in place, we are able to speak about what is an equilibrium. Okay. So equilibrium is any point that is any state xe such that f of txc is equal to zero is identically equal to zero for all time greater than equal to t0 okay so i will repeat the equilibrium yeah is a state particular state x sub e such that f of t x c is identically equal to zero for all time t greater than equal to t0 okay now why is this a valuable or an important sort of point? It is because if you see if f t x c is equal to zero, what do I have? I will have x dot equal to zero for all t greater than equal to t zero. 
correct? And if this happens, what does it mean? It means that my state never moves from Xe, right? So if I start in Xe, if I start my initial condition at X sub e, then I remain at X sub e. Okay. So in so this is to say that the point X sub e is in fact a solution of the system, a trivial solution of the system, if you may. Okay. And therefore, this is called the equilibrium. Yeah. Makes sense. A lot of you might have actually seen the notion of equilibrium in physics. Yeah. So you talk about the equilibrium of a pendulum, right? So if you do this, it sort of settles here. Yeah, it settles in the downward position and this is an equilibrium, right? Why? Because if I start here, it never moves from here, right? This is what it means to be in an equilibrium, okay? Right? So we've spoken about, uh, you've definitely seen equilibrium in your, even in your high school physics classes. Right. So this is the notion of an equilibrium, not very different from what you've seen in physics. Yeah. So it is a state from which the system does not move ever unless there is a disturbance. Yeah. We didn't assume any disturbance. Therefore, the state never moves from the equilibrium. Okay. And that is what this condition is aimed at ensuring. All right. Excellent. Then there is the notion of an isolated equilibrium. Okay. An equilibrium is said to be isolated if no e other equilibrium exists arbitrarily close to it. Okay, so this is from definition 342 in the book by Ionu and Sun. This is one of your references. Right? Uh, now, I can of course make it more formal. Right? If I want to make it more formal, what would I say? I would say that there exists epsilon positive such that for all x belonging to b since we know the notion of a ball in a metric space so this is the ball of radius epsilon around xe okay so f t x not identically uh, but I will say if tx is not equal to zero uh, for all t greater than or equal to t zero. Yeah. What does it mean when I say something like this? It simply means that x. Well, let me be more careful. I am also. Uh, let's see, I want to. Exclude, of course. Yeah, I of course want to exclude the point x e from this ball itself because x e is of course an equilibrium. What what am I saying? I'm saying that any x in this small ball around x e is not an equilibrium. Right? This is what this condition ensures is not an equilibrium because it moves away from this. Okay, so it's not equal to zero for all t greater than equal to t zero, right? So what does it mean? It means that there is a ball, yeah, there is a ball of radius, um, you know, epsilon around an equilibrium, and is within this ball, every point other than the x e is not an equilibrium. Okay, so that is what it means to be an isolated equilibrium. So it's very easy to construct examples of isolated equilibrium. So I will actually give you one such example, right, of an isolated equilibrium, right? So what is then example of an isolated equilibrium? So isolated equilibrium. Okay. And what is an example? Let's see. I can, I can. Just construct something on the fly. So this is x1 dot equal to x2 and x2 dot equals minus x1. Right? Okay, if you don't like uh, the linearity of this, I will just make it x1 squared. All right, no problem. Okay, I'll just make it x1 squared. So if you look at this system, what is the equilibrium? So if I write it formally, 
what would be the equilibrium the xe is equal to the set of all x1 x2 in r2 right such that my, uh, such that x2 comma minus x1 square is equal to 0 0 right so there is no time involved therefore i am not saying for all time greater than equal to t0 because there is no time in the right hand side right no time appears here so whatever i do is always true for all time greater than equal to t0 time is not there so now if i equate these two separately to 0 0 this is equivalent if you may to x1 comma x2 equal to 0 0 all right so these two are in fact equivalent all right therefore the equilibrium xe is just the point 0 comma 0 in r2 okay so this is an example of an isolated equilibrium because there is no other equilibrium anywhere nearby okay if i want to make it slightly more complicated because here it looks like there is only one equilibrium so why even talk about isolated and non-isolated so let's look at one more example yeah so let's see it's x1 dot is say sine of x2 and x2 dot is well let's see i am not going to do that i'm going to say x1 dot is x2 and x2 dot is sine of x1 okay what are the equilibrium here it's again the set of uh, x1 x2 in r2 such that uh, x2 comma sine x1 is 0 comma 0 okay so what is this yeah this is not that obvious right so this is actually sin x1 equal to 0 happens at all n pi right so you actually have uh, so if you actually compute sin x1 is 0 for all n pi right so this is actually of the form n pi uh, comma 0 with n being an integer for any integer n sin n pi is 0 right therefore all of these are allowed but you see these are still isolated right why are these isolated should be obvious to you right on the so if i draw this right so on the y axis this is zero so all the equilibria are on the x axis so one of the equilibria is here second one is pi another one is minus pi and so on right so there does exist you know this ball that we want right this mythical this ball of radius epsilon and this ball of radius epsilon right this ball of radius epsilon does exist within which there are no other equilibria these are none of these are equilibria except this guy right? so zero zero is an isolated equilibrium okay or minus pi zero is an isolated equilibrium plus pi zero is an isolated equilibrium right all of these are in fact isolated equilibria and this is nice we like this property let's look at the other case of a um, example of a non-isolated equilibrium right look at this example of a non-isolated equilibrium all right so what is it it's a system which looks like x1 dot is x1 x2 and x2 dot is x2 squared so if i write out carefully x e is the set of x1 comma x2 in r2 such that x1 times x2 comma x2 squared is zero zero all right now if you look at this carefully this in order for this to be satisfied i definitely need um from here 
I definitely have x2 to be 0. But if x2 is 0, I also see that x1, x2 is 0, irrespective of what is x1. Okay. Irrespective of what is x1. Okay, so this is x1 is arbitrary. Right? Because if x2 is 0 because of this second guy here, but if x2 is 0 already, then x1, x2 is always 0, irrespective of what is x1. So x1 can be arbitrary. So this is actually not correct. This is not correct. So your xc will be of the form x1, or let me just call it some alpha, comma, 0. So this is all alpha in reals are allowed. Now what is the problem? Let's look at this equilibrium. Let's look at this set Xe. Because Xe is not one point, but it's a set. All right, so let's look at this set Xe. What does it look like? So I have the axis. Okay, so this is the X axis and this is the Y axis if you may. Or I mean in, in the notation of this paper, sorry, in the notation of this example, this is the x1 axis and this is the x2 axis. Right? And what do my equilibria look like? They have y equal to 0 in both cases. Okay, and x can vary, x can be anything. So my equilibria actually look like this. Okay, my equilibria actually look like this. They span the entire x-axis okay and you can see this is not isolated right so this is all of x-axis and this is not isolated okay right why is this not isolated because you see equilibria really exist arbitrarily close to each other Right? There's no way I can separate them with a ball of epsilon. No way. You cannot draw a ball of any size epsilon and miss other equilibria here because you will catch the other equilibria on the x-axis. Right? No way you miss them. Okay? And this is a problem. Okay? Why do we care about isolated equilibria? Is because all of our Lyapunov stability definitions are for isolated equilibria only. Okay? So this is the critical point okay this is the critical point for isolated equilibria only okay and why is that why is that see all the notions of stability are defined using norms and metric spaces okay so suppose i have an equilibria say denoted by xe okay and i take a comparison point x minus xe and i take the norm because all the notions of stability in everything is defined using norms right this is why we introduced the notion of norms yeah because so that we can compare points and and figure out how far they are from each other so that's why we needed the notion of norms all right so all the notions of stability based on norms right so stability notions based on norms okay and what does this mean it means that whenever i evaluate x minus x sub e right and the equilibria is not isolated okay equilibria is not isolated then you can very well see that x minus x sub e plus epsilon yeah is almost equal to this yeah where epsilon is arbitrarily small yeah if epsilon is arbitrarily small yeah if epsilon is arbitrarily small then this norm and this norm are almost the same yeah and so what happens is that because my equilibria are really close to each other in fact there is no space between them yeah there is no way i can talk about 
stability of a particular equilibria because there is another equilibria really close to it. And when I try to compare between, you know, of, of compare x with some point here and some point here, it's almost the same. In fact, they will be the same if your epsilon is 0 or if your epsilon is, you know, you know 1e minus 10, 1e minus 20. All right. So you can see that in the absence of isolated equilibria, it is difficult to even make sense of, you know, which equilibrium I'm comparing with. Okay, and therefore, Lyapunov stability notions do not work here. And therefore, we always assume that there exists an isolated equilibrium for the system. Okay, so I hope this makes sense to you. Yeah, this is systems like these with equilibria like these are very difficult to define stability for. Okay, and, and we will see immediately uh, what these stability definitions look like. And therefore, you will see that the norms appear. And because the norms appear, there's no choice but to assume some kind of uh, isolated equilibrium. All right. So let's see. Let's see the first stability definition. Okay, this is called Lyapunov stability or stability in the sense of Lyap. Okay. What does it require? It is a test condition, right? It, it, it says that I give I get something and then I give something in return. It's sort of a test condition. So, what is this test condition? For all epsilon positive, so if I'm given any epsilon, so the user has to give me epsilon. Remember, I cannot choose epsilon. Epsilon is given to me by the user. So, this is a common confusion a lot of students have whenever they try to prove Lyapunov stability. Epsilon is given by the user and hence arbitrary. And this symbol, therefore, the symbol for all epsilon positive, I must be able to find a delta which can depend on the initial time and this epsilon, which is also positive, such that for all initial conditions with delta distance from the equilibrium, the solutions remain at an epsilon distance from the equilibrium for all time. Okay, so let me sort of draw a picture to help us understand. Okay, so let's see. So this is my axis. This is again a face plane portrait. Okay, so, so get used to this face plane portrait thing, right? So, all right, so this is my axis. Okay, now let me draw two circles. Right, so this is, I hope this looks like a circle, I think so, right? So the red one is the epsilon circle, right? So this is the epsilon circle and the blue one So the blue one, let me try to draw it again. Right, and the blue one is the delta circle. Oops, sorry. Uh, the blue one is the delta circle. So what does this stability in the sense of Lyapunov say? What does it require? It requires that if I'm given the epsilon circle, so the epsilon circle is already given to me, this is red ball is already given to me. And so this is the phase plane okay so let me uh this is x1 this is x2 i'm just show just for illustration we are um showing it with uh you know in uh two dimensions because that's what we can illustrate very easily in otherwise it's difficult yeah but otherwise this the same logic works for any dimension 
so what does it say it says that uh, if you have a trajectory right which uh, if you're given the epsilon ball that is this red colored ball okay then as a challenge answer i have to be able to give you a delta ball now this delta ball can is has to be positive of course so therefore it's a actual ball metric ball right containing some points in the state space right and uh, it is allowed to depend on t0 and epsilon right and what are we saying that any trajectory which starts in the delta ball yeah any trajectory which starts here stays within the epsilon ball for all time okay so never escapes the epsilon ball for all time okay so that is what does it say it says that if i start in the delta ball i remain in the epsilon okay so that's the whole idea so this magenta thing is the trajectory of the potential trajectory of the system so any trajectory which starts inside the delta ball must remain inside the epsilon ball and this is what it means for a system to be stable in the sense of lyapunov now again let's go back to this issue of non isolated equilibria because we said that we cannot deal with them and let's try to see why okay now we are talking about this xc so i mean this of course it should be obvious to you that the point in the center here you know whatever is the origin in this case is xc it's the equilibrium now in the case of non isolated equilibria you can see that very close to here we can have another you know i can have another equilibrium or another equilibrium very close right now if it's this close what do you expect will happen you can see that i can replace xc by any of these points in pink right i can replace xc by any of these points right these things on the sides yeah and nothing much will change right so the problem becomes that but the thing is this circle of course has to be centered on the other one but but because it's a norm these values are not going to change significantly right especially as this pink thing comes closer and closer to the blue point okay and that is a problem because i don't even know which equilibrium i'm talking about right i may be talking about xc or i may be talking about these pink things right so i don't even know which equilibrium i am trying to test the stability of okay and this is why dealing with uh non isolated equilibria is a rather um difficult challenge so we of course deal with it in different ways so we'll talk about it later as and when we need it yeah right now just remember that we require the equilibria to be isolated all right now one of the things that should sort of be evident to you right is that uh delta right delta has always has to be less than or equal to epsilon the way this definition is made you require that delta has to be less than equal to epsilon okay all right what happens okay let's try to you know do a thought experiment if delta greater than epsilon what could happen right if delta greater than epsilon what could happen so what i'm saying is that x0 minus xc is less than delta right but this is greater than epsilon right so when i say that i require xt minus xc to be less than epsilon for all t greater than equal to t0 this has to of course be true at t0 also okay this has to be true also at t0 because notice i said it has to be true for all t greater than equal to t0 so if i plug in t equal to t0 this still has to hold but now notice i said that this is less than delta 
which is larger than epsilon so there is no guarantee that at initial time this is less than epsilon at all it may be but it may not be either therefore the challenge fails at the initial time itself if delta is greater than epsilon okay so by mistake if you get an answer which says that delta is greater than epsilon then you can safely assume that that was the wrong answer all right okay great so excellent so what did we talk about today we sort of um, ventured forward to look at what is equilibrium what is an isolated equilibrium and what is a non-isolated equilibrium and why an isolated equilibrium is rather critical for uh, talking about stability in the sense of Lyapunov and then finally we saw the first stability definition that is in fact stability in the sense of Lyapunov and we saw the first epsilon delta definition uh, in this class all right so this is where we'll stop but of course in the future also we will see further stability definitions and more epsilon delta definitions all right thank you folks mm -hmm.